Hey, how you doing? Thank you for joining me. You know, just in case you're joining me for the very first time, I'm your host, Brian Glaze Gibbs, and this is my channel. Hit that like button, subscribe to my channel. Um, I got a lot of content coming out, so be prepared. Right now, 2021, welcome, welcome everybody. Like I said, took a few days off. I'm back, ready to get things rocking and rolling. Um, what I'm doing today, what I'm talking about, the definition of a true friendship. A true friendship is a long-term connection with someone, a special relationship between people who enjoy being together, being around one another, being in each other's company. So what happened? What happened to these three young fella, Little Inch, okay, Black Jack, and Haitian Jack, okay, right now was what happened to their friendship? What happened to, you know, once again, here it is. This is a picture, Little Inch, okay? Black Jack, okay? And Haitian Jack, you know what I'm saying? What happened? These guys was friends. They was like best friends. I'm talking right now is what happened to their friendship, okay? That would have caused Inch and Blackjack to want to pay me, Brian Glaze Gibbs, a king ransom to murder their one-time best friend, you know what I'm saying? Haitian Jack, okay? That's the confusing part. Don't get me wrong. When you sit back and you think about that word, friends, okay? You know, like, look at it. The hip-hop group Houdini, what they had a song called let's be friends how many people have them let's be friends you know what like i told you friend is a very crucial word okay you can choose your friend but you can't choose your family so what happened between these individuals i'm talking about larry curly and mo they always down together they share everything together as kids as they was growing up to be from boys to men I'm talking about they share their clothes, their jewelry, their girls, their car. So what the heck happened? What went wrong? What took place to cause these individuals to flip on one another? You know, to me, like when you sit back, things happen. Just because a person used to be your friend, even in these days and time, that don't mean they still are your friend. Because once again, People fall out for some of the simple Simon's reason. I don't get it. I don't understand it. But when you sit back and you look at it and you try to wrap your hands around the situation and understand what took place, okay? Now, to me, as I get back into the story, and bear with me, folks, okay? Been a minute, okay? The inquiring mind would like to know the trio was once snotty nosed friends, okay? That did everything together from sharing clothes girls money jewelry cars gun what could have possible taken place what happened to break up the three musketeers i couldn't tell you, you know what i'm saying all i knew every time that i ran into black jack every time i ran into black jack and inch every time i ran into these guys you know here it is little inch again Okay. Hey, I'm Blackjack again. Every time I ran into him, right now is, I don't know what it was, but based upon who I was and the things they thought I was into, they wanted me to take care of this guy, you know? And they was very, very persistent about it. They wanted me to get him. They wanted me to murder Haitian Jack, okay? During that period, I was into my own private world. I have my own thing going, okay? At one point in time, like I say, during that time, I'm making 40 a day. I'm down with Lorenzo Fat Cat Nichols. I'm down with the Eminem. Eminem was my crew. So what I'm saying is, why are you going to take on extra unnecessary problem? I'm saying, you know, right now I'm running my day-to-day -day operation. And okay, cool. And honestly, I refuse to take the hit because whatever problem, you know what I'm saying, Larry, Curly, and Mo had, you know what I'm saying, with each other, it did not involved me and all money was not good money okay i'm gonna repeat that all money was not good money okay it would have been a different if i was starving if i didn't have nothing coming in if i wasn't making no money if i was making no money you know what i'm saying and i was broke you know what i'm saying down on my luck if that was the case haitian jack 
would have been a five course meal. Haitian Jack would have been free lunch. You know what I'm saying? Simple as that. But the difference right now is it wasn't the case. So to me, right now, I didn't hit Haitian Jack. I didn't murder Haitian Jack because to me, I didn't really have no reason to. Like, you know, all of us, like I say, we knew each other from childhood. Okay? All of us. We knew each other from being, like you say, snotty-nosed kids growing up in Brooklyn back then. And when everything was going on, you know, and like everybody got into that crack, that crack world. Okay? When you sit back and you look at it, the crack, the crack epidemic. And that's what changed people. Whereas you have folks, you know what I'm saying, becoming dealers. You know what? You can go out there and get into it on a small level. And when you get into it on a small level, then all of a sudden right now, if you play your cards right and you got the right connection and the right location, you can blow up. And that's what was happening. So the difference is right now is sometimes the more people start making more money, their attitude, their behavior, everything change. They viewpoint, they, you know, they, they, they view a life. I'm talking about right now is what went wrong? Did Haitian Jack, you know what I'm saying, got slick and beat them for a large package of money? Did he beat them for a large package? Did he beat them for money? What did he do? I'm saying, what did he do to these individuals to cause them wanting me to kill them? Like I said right now, I don't know. You know what I'm saying? They never told me. Only time they, when they was like, I'd say, every day they saw me, when, whenever they see me, yo, Glaze, we want you to do this. We'll pay you anything. We'll give you any amount of money. And once again, folks, desperate people do desperate things. I wasn't desperate. And to me, like I told you right now, was, guess what? I know all of them. But what I'm saying is, Jack never did nothing to me. So even as time went on, I can remember being down there in Virginia Beach during 1988. I was on a run. And when I was on a run, and you know, from the feds for the case, Operation Horse Collar. I ran into my man, Derek Smith. I was trying to get a photo of Derek Smith. And like I told you, Derek Smith, old timer. Derek Smith, you know, hung out with Pappy and all those guys. They grew up together with the cats. Um, So I was down in Virginia Beach on the run. And right now, me and Derek was talking. And we was talking about, he was asking me about, you know, Pappy. He was asking me about, you know, saying Tut. A lot of things. Um, talking about back in the days when we was kids on the island or whatever. And right now, we we started talking about Jack, and I told him, man, I don't know what it is, man, but these cats want me to take care of Haitian Jack or whatever. So, you know, we just laughing and joking and BSing around on the strip on Virginia Beach. Then all of a sudden, right now, where it's like I say, Derek had got the car with some big body Mercedes Benz. Then all of a sudden, the back window went down, and it was Haitian Jack smiling. So, like, to me, like, you know, even everybody said, oh, man, was you scared? Or he had you? Or he was, everybody got to understand, like, Jack wasn't built like that. Jack was a cool cat, and Jack was not a killer. He hung out with a bunch of killers. You know, right now, it's like Derek Smith. So the difference is when Derek came home, trust me, Jack probably snatched him up, paid Derek, you know what I'm saying, look out for him, you know what I'm saying, dress him, gave him some money, put money in his pocket, hook him up, bought him a car. And what I'm trying to say right now was he was no dummy. So the difference is right now was he hung out with killers. So he paid these guys to guess what? Somewhat protect him. So he knew what he was doing. So, and, and, and folks, what you got to understand is this. Everybody cannot be doctors, cannot be lawyers, cannot be, you know, police officer, uh, sanitation worker, transit worker. Just like everybody cannot be drug dealers, killers, um, stick-up kids, pimps. So the difference is right now is, folks, the different, what everybody got to realize is everybody is different. We are all unique creature created by God and that's what we have to look at everybody is not the same so to me yes I was once the problem now I'm seeking to be part of the solution now I'm seeking to take my life story my ministry which is my life story the good and the bad and the ugly I'm seeking to share it each and element each and every element of my life to get folks to understand guess what crime doesn't pay there's no shortcut in life. It's easy to get into trouble and it's hard to get out of it. When we are better than that, folks, what we need to do, we need to think. We need to pray. We need to stay above water. What we need to do is we need to teach our youngster.
to let them know that that street life is not the way. You know what that street life can lend? That street life can end to this, folks. You see this right here? Get your hoodie. Crime doesn't pay. Get your T-shirt. Crime doesn't pay. Come on. Who the heck want to be in this place? I'm talking about right now. I don't care if it's a day, a week, a month, a year, five years, 10 years, 15 years, or the rest of your life. Who the hell want to be in prison for the rest of their life? Nobody want to be in prison for a day, a minute, a second. All that stuff is overrated, folks. Listen, take it from somebody that know, man. Like I told you, we was once young, dumb, stupid kids. Got caught up into that street life. Not understanding, guess what? The street life don't love nobody. I'm talking about right now. Was Listen, look at this picture right here. Okay? This is me. This is me. As a kid. Okay? That's my firstborn. And you know what? Here it is. When I went to jail, he was 99 days old. Okay? What's cool about that? What's cool with having your kids coming to see you in the visiting room? There's nothing cool about that, folks. And that's what we have to understand, man. Listen, let's get our life together. Let's get these kids to let them know right now is, guess what? It's nothing wrong with a day of hard work. It's nothing wrong with a day of going to punch that clock, man. Doing it right the first time. That's what life is all about, man. Listen, like to me, what I do is I'm talking about the good, the bad, and the ugly part of my life, man. I'm talking about it was a dirty game, man. But guess what? It was choices that we all made. And to me, what I want to do is I want to stop these kids from making that multi-billion dollar prison system their permanent address, man. We are better than that. And we can do better than that, folks. Hey, hit me up. Hit that like button. Subscribe to my YouTube channel. You know what? Follow me on IG, Brian Glaze Gibbs. Get your signed copy of this book, Beyond Lucky. The Brian Glaze Gibbs story. A true story of crack, money, murder, and redemption, folks. Like I say, that crack was an epidemic, man. That crack war, that crack scene, that crack environment, that Joe crack has. I'm saying right now, selling crack was all whack. Okay? Like Whitney used to say, selling crack, and I'm saying using crack, smoking crack, is whack. Drugs, period, man. Illegal drug, illegal activity is whack, folks. We are better than that. We are people are better than that. I'm talking about right now is it's so much things positive that we can be doing with our life. And what we have to do is teach these kids now. Teach them at their early age. Let them know right now, man, listen, it's not the way. It's nothing cool about spending a day, a week, a month, a year, your life in jail. It's nothing cool about that. And anybody that think that's cool, you stay away from them. You run from them, okay? You run as far as ways you can as possible because it's not worth it. Listen, this is my ministry and look what I'm telling you folks. I am not your typical minister. I'm gonna give you the good, I'm gonna give you the bad, I'm gonna give you the ugly, but I'm gonna always give you the truth. Once again, thank you for joining me. Hit that like button, share. And subscribe to my channel. Bryant Glaze Gibbs. Signing off. One love.